Do you ever feel like some people are born with talent and you always say, oh, they have it easy since they were born with talent? Or if I told you, you can be talented too with a little magic called myelin. In this video, I'll be explaining three main ingredients to cultivate talent with comparison to the anime and manga blue period. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to apply these ideas to your own life to learn skills and become talented in those skills. So when I finished blue period, I was so surprised how Yatara, a guy who knew nothing about art, yet alone didn't know how to paint, then to become a painter who got accepted to Tokyo University of Arts, which has a super low acceptance rate. I had many questions like, how do Yatara learn how to paint so quickly? Does being a genius or a person with talent play a huge role in success? And can working hard get you to success? I'm going to be using the book The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle to understand how Yatra learned art so fast and find out what makes a person talented with some science behind it too. So the first thing that all talented people have in common is a moment of ignition. Ignition is the initial fuel that drives what you want to do. In other words, ignition is a feeling when you see someone achieving the impossible, it gives you hope and drive to say, yeah, I want to do that. Ignition causes you to believe you can succeed before you're able to succeed. I believe the first time Yatra truly felt this ignition is when he saw Mori Senpai's angel painting. And in episode two, Yatara actually admits that if it wasn't for Mori Senpai, he would probably never gotten into art. Anyways, while looking at this painting, he was so engrossed by it and started to ask questions, which sparked his curiosity. And later on, when Yatara actually met and talked to Mori Senpai, and during their conversation, Yatara talked about how early morning Shibuya is silent and blue, but Mori Senpai didn't really understand what Yatara meant, which made Yatara feel a little bummed out. But when Mori Senpai quoted her old teacher that if it looks blue to you, then anything can be blue, whether it's an apple or rabbit. When she said that, Yatara was yet again ignited and decided to put a little more effort into his art class assignment. After completing his assignment, he received compliments from his friends, peers, and teacher and thought to himself, why didn't I start drawing sooner? So ignition is essentially the motivation that is caused when we see someone doing something that we think is impossible and when that impossible becomes possible, we start to create a vision of our ideal future self performing that talent. And this ignition is useful because it helps fuel your deep practice, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Before that, I want to share a quick real life story of ignition. It was May 1954, a young medical student by the name of Roger Bannister, the first ever man to break the four minute mile barrier. And you can imagine for decades before, the notion of breaking the four minute mile was said to be impossible. So you can imagine for decades we have professional people who run track and field, but was never able to break this four minute mile till one day Roger Bannister, a person who was not a professional runner, broke the four minute barrier. The crazy part wasn't break the four minute barrier itself, but exactly 19 days later after he broke that record, someone else broke it. So it's crazy to think about how when someone achieves the impossible, all of a sudden everyone else thinks it's possible now. And it really shows how the brain sets limits on your body, but you have the ability to break those limits. The second thing that all talented people have in common is deep practice. Deep practice is taking your practice sessions to the edge of your abilities or outside your comfort zone and reflecting on the mistakes you made and correcting them. This is the most important part when trying to build talent since the fundamental goal of deep practice is to build more myelin. Remember when I said that in the beginning of this video? Yeah, now we're going to talk about it. So every movement, feeling, and thought sends electrical signal that goes through a specific path of neurons in the brain. Every time you're in a deep practice or doing something repeatedly, your allegro dendrocytes are producing more myelin in your brain circuit. And a brain circuit with myelin can transmit information 10 times faster than a brain circuit without myelin. The more we myelinate the circuits in our brain, the more things become automatic for us. This is why habits are so hard to break because you can't unwrap myelin, but you can replace the habits to send different signals. Here's an example of a nerve fiber without myelin. You can see that when the signal is sent, the signal cannot fully reach the axon terminal, which is the place where messages are received to perform the action. Now we have a nerve fiber with myelin, you can see signals are being sent at a much faster rate and reaching the end. This just shows that myelin plays an important role in acquiring any skill. Now how does this relate to Yathra's case? Before I tell you that, first I have to talk about the last ingredient to cultivate talent, which is called master coaching. Master coaching refers to having the correct mentor to help you become better in the skill or talent you're trying to acquire. Master coaches are people who are focused on creating an environment of development and learning for you. 
They push you and give you constant feedback, keeping you in a deep practice state. Personally, I think Yatra's master coach was Oba Sensei. And some of you may be thinking, but isn't Psyche Sensei also Yatra's master coach? Well, I don't think so, because the difference between Psyche Sensei and Oba Sensei is that Oba Sensei specializes in getting kids into art school or art universities. Of course, Psyche Sensei is knowledgeable about art and helped Yatra in the beginning. But Oba Sensei demonstrated the four common virtues of what all master coaches have in common. The first virtue is the Matrix. And no, I'm not talking about the movie. What I mean by the Matrix is that great teachers are the ones who can take the students to a deeper level of learning. For instance, when Yatara was basically trying to copy his own artwork, Oba Sensei commented, It's not fresh, and there's no challenge or improvement. She could have just been like, Yeah, this is good art, and let it end there. But she believes that Yatara has the capability to go further. The second virtue is perceptiveness, which is the ability to focus on the student as a teacher and figure them out. Just like with Yatara copying his own art, Oba Sensei noticed that he copied his own art, which is actually pretty amazing since she probably sees a lot of artwork as a teacher, and to be able to keep track of who painted what is pretty amazing. And Oba Sensei was not just perceptive with Yatara, she was perceptive with her other students and talked about their strengths and weaknesses. The third virtue is the GPS reflex which means that master coaches are able to steer their students on the right directions with short, vivid, high-definition bursts of information. So whenever Oba Sensei gave advice for Yatara, she always made him find the answer instead of giving him the answer, which I really like. Because when you have to find your own answer, you first have to ask yourself questions. And by asking these questions, you will understand why you do these things, and it comes down to you to either stay the same or change. The last virtue is theoretical honesty, which means that master coaches or teachers have the ability to change the way how they act depending on the situation to convey a certain message. Oba Sensei does this quite a lot. She goes from being playful and telling jokes with a group of students to serious when she gives one-on-one -on -one advice. By doing this, we as human beings understand when people are serious, they want you to really listen to them. Versus when they're being playful, you could be more relaxed around them. I definitely think that Oba Sensei played a major part for Yatara to grow as an artist and help to get into Tokyo University of Arts. Okay, now we're going back to the topic of deep practice, since deep practice is actually the most important ingredient into developing talent. As I said earlier, deep practice is taking your practice sessions outside of your zone of comfort. In other words, to get better at something, you have to do the things that you're not good at. And when you do the things that you're not good at, you're actually increasing your brain's neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to undergo change in response to experience and get better. When Yatara was in that cram school, he had to learn how to paint things without a given model, which is something he struggled with. But this struggle led him to try a form of art that he hasn't experienced yet, which was abstract art. Before episode five in the anime, Yatara only drew what was in front of him or what someone told him to draw. By learning how to paint abstract topics, Yatara pushed outside of his zone of comfort and myelinated more parts of his neurons, eventually allowed him to send better signals, and he finally understands what he was lacking when he visited Mori Senpai's university and took a look at her art. This also brings us back to the first ingredient talent, which was ignition. Sometimes when we revisit the things that made us want to pursue that obtainment of that skill in the first place, we are more likely to remember why we started, and that serves as motivation to push us forward. For Yatara, his ignition was Mori Senpai, specifically her art, and after he saw her art at her university, Yatara said, it made me really want to get back to drawing. Another important point to deep practice is that you have to accept errors and failures. Yatara himself failed and made so many errors throughout the series, but these failures are actually what made him get so good at art really fast. One study showed that making errors cues your nervous system into doing two things. One is error correction, meaning when you make a mistake, you're more likely to notice that mistake and do your best to not to repeat it. The second thing is that errors allow your brain to undergo neuroplasticity, which is the brain's ability to undergo change in response to experience, meaning that whenever you make an error, your brain is going to digest what you did wrong and upgrade itself because errors tell your brain that something needs to change. And this is amazing since if you were like me before, I used to view errors or mistakes as something shameful. Maybe it could have stemmed from being picked on by a teacher to answer a question that you don't know the answer to and you give a wrong answer and everyone laughs at you for giving the wrong answer and making you feel stupid. Sorry, I got a little heated there. But it's alright since you know what they say, a person who's never made a mistake never tried anything new. 
One more thing that I found that I think that accelerated Yatra's learning process was his environment, specifically the people around him. Ever since he entered that art prep school, Yatra was surrounded by artists who were all eating, breathing, and thinking about art in a sense. I think there's a certain magic at play here when you surround yourself with people who are serious and achieving the same goals as you. It's like that saying, you are the average of the five people you surround yourself with, but what is the science behind this? Well, I believe it has something to do with your mirror neurons. Mirror neurons are the cells in our brain that causes us to sometimes copy or imitate the behaviors of the person in front of us. One good example is... <sighs> oh. Sorry about that. But yes, yawning is a good example. When we see someone yawning, we typically yawn back. And the same thing can be applied to Yathra's case when he was surrounded by hard-working art students. By seeing them working hard, he subconsciously worked harder. So the next time when you're trying to learn a skill, try to be surrounded with people who are serious in obtaining that same skill as you. And then Blue Period is literally a work of art and really shows that with enough hard work, anyone can achieve greatness. I love Blue Period so much since the whole story is just so amazing and the main character Yatra is just so relatable to all of us. And it makes me think that a lot of people who are talented are actually hard workers most of the time. And when we see these talented people from an outside perspective, we see the after picture of someone, but not the before picture. So we end up saying that this person is talented without seeing the countless hours they spent on their craft. And I really like Blue Period because it actually focuses and shows how the main character works hard to become good at his craft. Thank you guys so much for watching this kind of video. If you like this kind of video where I combine anime with science, please subscribe since it helps me know that there are people who like what I make. And I hope you guys found some valuable insight from this video to help you finally achieve that one skill you either have been procrastinating on or about to start on. Also, I'm considering making more videos like this where we can learn things from animes and possibly incorporate them into our own lives to help us grow in whatever way we can. But keep a lookout for my next video, and thanks.